Hey guys, James here with Waterford Business Solutions, and I wanted to go ahead and continue our conversation and series about project costing within QuickBooks Online. When we got started with all this, I told y'all that it would be kind of a long, drawn-out process because projects is a complicated thing. At this point, we're going into the fourth video, um, and there's one more main video and one sub-video for specific people. But this video, we're going to be talking about costing our labor um, and specifically when we're doing job costing labor becomes a very very important thing um, because most of the time labor is probably going to be your biggest cost for a project unless you're just buying a really big piece of equipment but in order to job cost we need to know our exact labor costs and everything like that so we've been working on this project here and we've put in income and we see all of our income there and we put in our expenses and we see all of our expenses there and we've got a wonderful profit margin of 75%. If only all jobs had a 75% profit margin there. Unfortunately, that's not normal and this is about to significantly drop solely for the fact of we're gonna put in all of our labor on this job. So we're gonna come here back to all projects and you've got two ways to put in labor. Way number one is honestly the easiest um, and is, happens fairly autonomously. And if you have QuickBooks Online set up to run your payroll, so you've got all of your employees in here, they're set up, you're paying them through QuickBooks, through direct deposit, you're paying your taxes through QuickBooks, all of that, then as you put in hours for your employees on the weekly timesheet, then they are going to go ahead and those hours will automatically be fed into a project and associated with that project. Not everyone uses QuickBooks Online for their payroll though. Some people use Gusto, some people use ADP, some people use um, an outside service, some people hire, their, hire contractors through a full service solution. Um, there's plenty of different ways to do your payroll so when we're talking about that little option there, it's honestly a very small percentage of people who are going to be affected by that. Um, more people are honestly going to fall more into the route of they need to know how much labor and how much cost is associated with the job, but they aren't running it through QuickBooks, so QuickBooks can't figure it out by itself. When we're running the payroll through QuickBooks, QuickBooks knows, hey, this is exactly what I spent on taxes for this employee, for these hours that they worked for this job. QuickBooks knows this is exactly how much I spent on um, benefits for this employee, for this job, for this day, et cetera, et cetera. So QuickBooks knows all that because it's all programmed into the system and it's able to push all that information in. But when we're using ADP or when we're using um, Gusto or when we're using an outside service, most of the time all we're putting into QuickBooks is the total amount that we're paying the employees or just the total amount we're paying the outside service. I see a lot of times where payroll is three transactions. Um, $5,000 for salary, $500 for taxes, and $100 for the payroll service fee. It's three simple transactions, but that doesn't tell us where that money went, who it went to, et cetera, et cetera. So with that knowledge, QuickBooks developed projects to go around that because it was a huge issue in project costing in QuickBooks Desktop and any project system before. And this is honestly really where the bread and butter of projects starts coming through. Because a lot of the stuff that we've talked about previously, the old way of project tracking with sub-customers was awesome for, it worked, um, and we didn't have any issues. But now that we're getting into kind of the little finite details, this is where projects shine. So for those of y'all that use an outside service other than QuickBooks Payroll to do your payroll, you have this option up here called hourly cost rate. And with your hourly cost rate, you can put in all of your employees here. You can add them in here, put in their information, name, phone number, whatever you kind of want to do here so that you have employee information. And I recommend doing that even if you're not using projects solely for the fact of it gives you a place to at least track employee contact information outside of just your payroll service provider. Because we can kind of see hire date, release date, birth date. So we just have a little bit of information here. 
But once we add employees, then we can come in and add cost rates. And you can say that whenever David works, he it costs you um, $20 an hour. Now the one thing to keep in mind with the cost rate is a cost rate isn't the employee's wage. It's not their hourly salary or anything like that. Excuse me, their hourly wage or anything like that. It is what it costs you for that employee to work one hour. So it gets a lot more complicated than that. So I do recommend within the hourly cost rate, you have this little handy dandy calculator here. And we can come in here and say, okay, well, David gets paid $20 an hour. Well, what it's going to do right there is as soon as we put in $20 an hour, it's going to auto calculate our employer taxes at 7.65%, which is the current rate. Then we're going to have our additional employer taxes. So these are going to be things that it really depends on the company. QuickBooks doesn't know this because they're not your payroll service provider, but your state unemployment tax, your federal unemployment tax, and depending on the state you live in, maybe workers' comp taxes or other stuff like that, those vary business by business by business. Um, so you need to really understand where you fall in with those. Each state has different rates for everything. Each business has different rates on top of being within their state. So you will have documentation from both the federal government and the state government on what your rates are be, would be. And if you ever have questions, reach out to your payroll system or your payroll provider because they should know that. Um, if they're paying your taxes correctly, they should know that. So we would want to know that between Social Security, federal unemployment, or not Social Security, state unemployment tax, federal unemployment tax, and other random taxes that you have state by state, um, you probably have, let's say, maybe a 3% um, rate on that. So we take the 20% and we multiply it by 3%. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. So when we go ahead and do that, we go ahead and come up with, it costs 60 cents per hour in other taxes. Now we come on down here to workers' comp. Same thing with this additional employer taxes, depending on your business, depending on your state, depending on what you're doing, depending on claims you've had, that's going to affect your workers' comp rate. But you can always contact your workers' comp company, um, maybe even your payroll provider, because some payroll providers are going to know this automatically, but you can always contact your workers' comp company and figure out what your rate is. Um, some companies just charge you a total bill, so you do have to do some calculations there and say, okay, we've got 10 employees um, and they charge us 10000 or or $1,000 a month. Let's just keep kind of simple math. So it costs us $100 per employee per month, and that employee works an average week of 40 hours a week. So they're working um, 160 hours a week. So we know based on that, that our workers comp rate for David is specifically going to be 62 cents, 62.50 per hour. So 62 cents 0.5. So I would go ahead and just round that up. It's better to be a little bit higher. I mean, it's half a penny, but better to be a little bit higher. Other companies, they actually charge you on an as incurred basis. So they have a rate for you and that rate is 0.2%, um, 0.3%, whatever. Um, and for every hour that David works, you get charged 0.3% of that or 0.2% of it. So again, it's really going to depend on your workers comp company, which is why you need to go ahead and contact them. Now, another thing that comes in here is overhead. Now, when David's working, what does it cost you in overhead to keep him working? Um, and that's going to depend on your definition of overhead as a company. Overhead is generally stuff that we can't assign to a specific job. Um, and it could be the rent. It could be the um, use of the vehicle that David uses. It could be stuff like that. However, most, the, most companies here, what we look at overhead is, is going to be benefits to that employee. That's going to be their health benefits, their division, their dental, maybe their 401k contribution, um, or stuff like that would be what overhead is. 
Um, and that's really what I recommend for you to look at here is overhead is what is a direct employee overhead, not what does it cost to keep the electricity on at the building? What does it cost to rent the building? What does it cost for David to use this vehicle? All of that stuff. What direct benefits do you give to that employee? And so again, you're going to have to go through and say, okay, David gets this, 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 this. It costs us $500 a month. If it costs us $500 a month there and David's working 160 hours a month, then we figure that out to be that David costs us an overhead about $3.12 um, and actually 12 and a half cents. So again, I'm going to kind of round up there to $3.13 is what our overhead for David is in the benefits we provide him. Healthcare, vision, dental, 401k. And again, it's going to depend on your business as to whether you provide that stuff. So we would go ahead and add all of that stuff in. And now that we've added that in and calculated it out, we go ahead and save it. And now we have a cost rate for David. And we would do that for every single employee that we have. Some of my employees I've done this for, some I haven't. But one thing to keep in mind is once you go ahead and you calculate this out, um, you're not going to ever be able to see those calculations again. They disappear once you calculate it out. Um, so I do recommend you kind of write down what you did. That way you understand for your future employees um, because you're going to always be adding employees, maybe taking them away, and you want to be costing exactly the same for each and every employee. One thing that you will see here is this overhead here. This is something that I've seen some of my clients like to use, stuff like that. And we basically take a look and say, okay, for us to keep the company just operational, um, to rent the building, to keep the electricity on, the utilities on at the building, to keep the trucks up and running, the gas going for the vehicle, so on and so forth, how much does it cost us per hour to do that? And so we can come in here and $500 is probably really, really high. I would hope it's very high. Because if you're saying that it costs you $500 an hour and a typical work month is 160 hours, um, you're talking about a lot of money going out there. I mean, you're talking about $80,000 just in overhead. So you would be honestly a million dollar a year company, probably multi-million dollar a year company if that is your overhead. So I'm going to kind of scale this back and we're going to say it's $50 an hour. Um, to keep our trucks running, to keep the electricity on, to keep the rent going, um, our normal overhead is $50 an hour. So we're going to do that. And again, overhead is going to be dependent on the company. This is not something that I recommend for everyone. This is just more I've seen some people do this. So it might work for you. Um, if it does, go ahead and use it. If it doesn't, um, don't use it. But do have a good understanding of your overhead. Don't just be guessing and saying $50 kind of like I did. You want to actually go in to a profit and loss statement, average it out over several months, and take a look at what overhead items you have, add them all up, divide them by a normal work month to figure out what your overhead would be. Once we do all of that, um, now we can go in and just like if we were running payroll through... QuickBooks, we would come in here and do a weekly timesheet. We're going to come in here for David. And we're going to choose the project that he was working on. Again, we need to choose that project to associate any and all costs with the project. So we're going to choose that project there. And it's going to show us our hourly cost rate and everything there. We can then come in and say that David worked five hours today or on Tuesday and eight hours on Thursday. And what it's going to do right there is it's going to figure out that he worked 13 hours total on that project. And that when we take the cost rate that we put in, it's going to multiply that by the hours to give us a cost for David to work on that project of $336.57. So we're going to save that. Now, David didn't go and do this project on his own. He also had Jim with him. So we're going to do a timesheet for Jim. Again, we're going to choose the project. We're going to say that, well, Jim was there for six hours this day, and he knocked off early on Thursday, so he was only there for seven hours. Well, Jim has a higher cost rate. He's at $31 instead of the um, $28 for David. 
So we have a cost for Jim working of 403.39, even though he worked the same 13 hours. And then for those of y'all that choose to use that overhead method there, um, we would come in here and we would say, okay, well, Jim and David worked 13 hours on the project, so we had 13 hours of overhead on this project. So it would, again, we say 13 hours, we have the $50 over here, it multiplies that out for $650 of overhead costs associated with the project. So we go ahead and we've done that, but we don't have a customer cho chosen here. So we go ahead and choose that concrete sciences again. Make sure that we are choosing the customer. If you don't choose the customer, then it's not going to apply to the project. So we go ahead and save that. Now once we save that, we can now come back to our Concrete Sciences project. And what we will see there is we now have significantly more expenses. We were somewhere around $3,600 and now we're over $5,000. So we increased by about $1,400. We increased by that because of our time, time activity. And you will see right down here, hourly time costs, and we'll see everybody that worked on the project and how much we paid them for working on the project. So it gives us all that information. And again, our profit margin has changed here. So instead of a 75% profit margin, now we're at a 65% profit margin. So it dropped us by about 10% there. So this is tracking time. Again, time is a very vital part of, excuse me, job costing and project costing. Um, time and um, payroll generally make up at least 10% of a project is what I've seen over time, like we kind of see here. Um, with that 10% being there, we do want to make sure we're tracking it. And so for those of y'all that aren't using QuickBooks for your payroll, you have to make sure that you put in all of those hourly cost rates up here and then you're going to have to put in the hours in QuickBooks. So you may very well be recording payroll in basically two places because you're going to have to record all the hours in QuickBooks and you're going to have to record the hours in ADP or in Gusto or to your third party provider or whatever you're doing there. Um, the other thing that you have going on here is if you are using QuickBooks, and the reason that I strongly suggest using it is you can put in the hours just once into a weekly timesheet, put it all out for what everybody worked, then when you run the payroll, all of the hours are already in there. If your costs change or if your benefits change or whatever, QuickBooks is gonna take care of that. They're gonna um, figure that out for you because you're more likely to change the deductions or the contributions that you're doing in your payroll service, then remember to come in here and change the hourly cost rate. Let's say that you were doing um, health care and a 401k contribution for David, but then he decided that he also wanted to do ear, eye, and dental. Um, and ear would honestly be covered by health care, but the eye and dental would be a separate health insurance and you're going to contribute 50 percent of that health insurance to that employee there well that changes your cost rate your overhead for david there you're going to record that in gusto or in adp but you're not going to record it per se in quickbooks so remember if you're not using quickbooks and i can't say this enough times i know i've said it several already but if you're not using quickbooks for your payroll provider any changes you do to payroll, you're going to have to come in here and change if you're using projects. That's why I like keeping it simple and using one system that's going to communicate all the way through rather than having multiple different systems and having to remember all these little different things here. Well, that kind of brings us to an end of the payroll and the wage costing of everything. As always, guys, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, whatever you want to do there, and we'll be happy to talk you through everything. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day.